People around the world have been growing food locally for centuries. In history class, you learn about the ancient cities that survived by growing their own food to meet the demands of the population. This has been the way society ran for centuries upon centuries. It has worked very well, but in the past 50 years, this system has changed. Our current form of agriculture in the United States consists of large-scale industrial farming that produce only one type of crop. This system relies heavily on the intensive use of chemical fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides, which pose serious threats to human health and wildlife, pollute water, and deplete nutrients in the soil. Another disadvantage of industrialized farming is that all food is grown thousands of miles away from people who live in the cities. All of the food must be transported by trucks to get to local supermarkets. The simplest way to solve all of these problems is to integrate ancient methods of agriculture into modern day cities. Urban agriculture is the only way to supply the community with healthy affordable food while at the same time creating a sustainable environment for the future. The plant is the first vertical farm in the city of Chicago, which uses all natural aquaponics technology to grow plants inside the building. We're the Plant Chicago, and we are championing circular economies and inspiring urban communities here in Chicago to produce their own food and create a more resilient future. I'd like to reform the way we grow food and the way we process food. It needs to be done locally, it needs to be done where people consume it and where the workers live. A lot of people think that the, the concept is, is crazy, but an awful lot of people don't. And a lot of people see that we have to do something. It's all a lot safer and more secure and humane, frankly, if it's your neighbor making your stuff rather than some faceless person halfway across the So just bringing any product you can bring back closer to your awareness is good and farming is the easiest one. We're here to both make a product and be part of a community and enrich the community actually. Yeah. The people of the community in Englewood have made the first certified organic high production urban farm in Chicago called Growing Home. Englewood is a very underprivileged community and without Growing Home, no one in the community would have access to healthy foods. By growing food for themselves, everyone in the community is able to have access to affordable organic food. Farmed Here is a new company in Chicago that vertically grows organic food in an old warehouse. Farmed Here grows certified organic basil, arugula, and other leafy greens using natural aquaponic technology. The growing process only takes a couple of weeks. Minutes after being harvested from the growing trays, the product is packaged and shipped to local grocery stores in the Chicagoland area. The company gives jobs to people in the community while sustainably providing the freshest produce to the consumers at the grocery store. On average, our produce has to travel over 1,500 miles to get to the grocery store. By manufacturing and distributing their products in Chicago, Farmed Here reduces the CO2 emissions into the air. The plant and Farmed Here both use aquaponics to grow their crops. The power of aquaponic technology have recently been rediscovered to efficiently grow large amounts of food in urban environments. Aquaponics is a combination of aquaculture and hydroponics. This system replicates what happens in nature. The ammonia from the waste of the fish filter into large growing beds where plants float in rafts and their roots are in the water, receiving all the nutrients necessary to grow. This is the net, what we think of as the, the next phase of urban agriculture, which is really thinking about the full food life cycle. Oftentimes you hear urban agriculture and you just think urban farms or urban gardens. We're not just growing food, we're processing it into finished products. And we're doing it locally and we're also doing it with uh, harnessing waste products as an energy source and a nutrient source. Urban agriculture can also be in the form of backyard gardens. Fotini Wickman 
a mother and natural gardener of eight years, has been growing because of the health benefits of natural foods. Um, well, we had kids, and um, our kids had food allergies, and one of um, our kids had, um, when I would go to like the local Caputo's mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah. so like we would feed her those foods, like vegetables, vegetables and fruits, and she would just break right. out, and we're like, is it the food? Is it the chemicals? I mean, I mean, she had either, you know, she, she was gluten-free as well, but, so um, and then when we switched to everything being organic yeah. and chemical-free, and then we started growing our own stuff in our backyard, she had absolutely no problems. So we could feed her like, wow. you know, celery or broccoli that was, you know, heavily sprayed from mm -hmm. like South America. And then I could feed her something we grew in our backyard or, you know, U.S. grown organic and like there was no, she had no problems with it. So she was like a lot one or two. Miss Wickmaning grows enough food in her garden to sell at the local farmer's market. A local newspaper guy that came mm -hmm. and he said, why is your corn, you know, a dollar or two for a dollar? He goes, that's a conventional, that's like a conventional yeah. cost. I said, because when we did our research, like we wanted these prices to be equal to what like conventional food would cost so people can buy it. Even her little garden has an impact on the people living in her community. Urban Canopy is another rooftop farm in the Chicagoland area that produces fresh produce for the people in the community and sells it with affordable prices. At, at our farmer's market, um, we actually try to practice what we think is, what we call, hey, what you think is fair. And it's, it's evolved a little bit since the beginning, but essentially that's what we eat. That's what all the different market managers are asked to do, is to, they, they talk to people and say, hey, what you think is fair for this stuff. Sometimes we'll break it down a little further into a more specific range of what something should cost, and then people can kind of self-select where they're able to or where they can be within that range. We do plan on having a market that's open this year at least twice a week where people can come here and buy products that are made locally or in the building, and they will all be local, yeah. healthy, organic products. So if we're talking about environmental impacts, we're doing some things like we are going to be operating an anaerobic digester that is clean, that has, that is low, low in terms of toxic emissions, not standard industrial facility emissions. So that's the piece of the economy that we've people used to do naturally and have gone away from in the past. 50 to 100 years of human existence, and we're bringing it back in a new form. What, we, what we'd like to see is the city just being more open, the city and the region being more open to decentralized power generation, and that can look like digesters, it can look like solar panels, it can look like rooftops, uh, wind turbines. Yeah. And that's really the key to getting people yeah. clean energy. The fact of the matter is that that material that's going down those holes is actually quite valuable. And if you can figure out a way to harness it uh, for something else, for making energy, for instance, or as material inputs to other processes, then you're way ahead. This year, the Plant Chicago will be installing an anaerobic digester. This digester is basically a giant composting machine. It is able to break down over 10,000 tons of food waste each year. This reusable material is used as a solid, as a liquid, and as a gas. The solid and liquid forms will be used as natural fertilizers for outdoor gardens, and the biogas that is emitted will be able to produce enough energy to run the building. Digesters around the Chicago region that yeah. handle all the food waste coming out of schools and cafeterias and, and sports stadiums yeah. um, that are then sending clean energy back to the city. The, right now we have an economy that incentivizes centralization and bigness and we want, we would like to see economic rules that incentivize decentralized, self-empowered communities, you know, generating and taking care of themselves. The benefit is the opportunity to be closer to production, for the opportunity to be closer to anything that we want to. I think there's a lot of just uh, misunderstanding of how Chicago has greatly advanced in urban agriculture. The city of Chicago has been able to grow healthy vegetables at an affordable price for people in the community and has been able to recycle food waste 
into renewable energy sources. Urban agriculture practices are necessary to the future of everyday city life. This is the only way to ensure that all citizens will have access to healthy, affordable foods and so that our future cities can be less harmful to the environment.